Hi guys, this is Sarah, and this is part two of screen toning and toning digitally. And it's time for the Illustrator. This is the CS6. It looks a bit different because I just played with the appearance. I like how it looks like this. Um, but I'm gonna show you some of the options that the Illustrator has that can save a ton of time um, in doing comics. If you are going to pursue comics and professionally you will end up using the illustrator more than more than the photoshop because the illustrator is an artist tool and if you are going to go into also graphic designing this will become your main tool because it has so many great options this is truly a tool for artists photoshop is a tool for editing so if you combine those two together you'll have some great results but now let's just talk about that tool for artists so first i have here are two documents, as you can see. That's a great feature because you can put from two to a hundred documents actually together, and they're really small in size. This document as a whole was 1.5 megabytes or so. So it's really small and just keeping it on your computer so if there's something wrong and you want to fix it at any time, it's there, not so big in size, so it's not really a bother like the Photoshop files. Photoshop files tend to be huge. The original raw image uh, like this could be up to 45 or 50 megabytes and I can put here my uh, artboard this is called artboard the artboard tool in any size I want of course if you want a4 there is always the settings here it shows you preset custom I will choose a4 if I don't like it I can simply remove it from this icon but since now I'm working on page 2, I don't need more than this one. And now I'm going to go to place and pick the Photoshop folder over here because I have done some uh, photo editing before and I have saved it in the Photoshop format. And I'll just adjust the picture and I am going to go to something called image trace. Again, this will be available somewhere here. Any icon or any list or anything like that will be available in the Windows tab. Uh, here we go. Here is the image trace, although I have it here. Now, every picture um, has different settings at time. I did choose for this one something called sketch art but this one has a bit lighter black so when I went into sketch art and it will start to do some stuff to make it look um, comic ish or more like sketch ish and it doesn't take more than five to ten seconds I went and zoomed in here and I found that I really didn't like how it looks there were some lines here that kind of disappeared or so on like that so I have chosen another option called high fidelity and what it is it takes the picture and changes it into a bit cartoony style while keeping most of the colors in it not changing again black and white again it will take some time because it changes the pixels into vectors and vectors is something that no matter how much you expand or maximize, it does not pixelize. Because it's like something elastic. It's uh, very, very uh, flexible with you. Not like pixels. Pixels are a bunch of squares near each other. So when you zoom in, it feels a bit sharp. But here, once I am uh, done and you will zoom in the picture, you'll see that the picture is not sharp at all. Okay, so this one took a bit longer time than um, the first image trace, probably because it has a bunch of colors there. As you can see, it has, if we look here, 9,953 colors. So it took a while until it arranged the colors and the paths and the anchors because it deals with tiny shapes or stuff. So there is, of course, paths and anchors to the whole thing. And I have here in the high fidelity image, since, you know, it's really high in quality, so it's picking all the most colors it can pick. 
I have a bunch of options. There's grayscale and black and white. I want to go with the black and white, this one. You'll see we'll finish much faster than um, something that has over 9,000 colors. And you have here the threshold, which kind of shows like how much you want to increase or decrease the blackness of the picture or uh, the lines. In other words, I already tried an option and uh, 160 was the best one for me. So I'm just adjusting it and it's rearranging the stuff and it reads two colors now. It reads the black and white. So you'll see here black and white, path is so on and uh, anchor so on. And all I gotta do now is to press expand. I'm here and this is expand. It, you see all those tiny dots? These are anchors and those lines are called the paths. So these are like shapes and the illustrator have divided them. Now I'm going to go to object and choose something called life paint cake. And it will start to get the image ready to be colored. But I'm also doing something here or playing with something called the gap options. Basically, there will be tiny little spaces that will let your color leak. So I'm just closing the spaces with uh, paths or with lines, the same lines that compose those blue lines. So I'm closing them and there is small, middle and large gaps. So this is going to take some time, but they both they work very much in the same way. So I'm closing up the middle gaps and I'm closing the large gaps and you can always choose also custom but you know we dealt with most of the sizes so there is no need for me to go and to set a custom size because it almost dealt with every gap in the pictures okay so we have closed the spaces and now it's time to color um, the tool of coloring is called the life buck paint bucket over here the cool thing also about the illustrator is that it shows you here ready swatches but that's not all the swatches it has it has so much more there is this huge library of colors and ready colors you'll see here there are even categories color books and you'll see all of that then there's foods and you see uh, ice cream and sweets and vegetables and you see nature and so on like that. Screen tone ones is here in patterns called basic graphics. And there isn't really much, but there is more than enough to you can play around. And you can even go to other color patterns since we're dealing with black and white here. I'm just dealing with the gray ones and the black and white ones and I can here show them in large thumbnails even. Also I like that there is 10 or 11 degrees of gray over there so I don't actually have to go and to worry about if is this gray right or is it wrong. They have already made it ready with certain um, degrees so it will be easier to remember like the hair is K60, you see M, Y, K, C is cyan, M, magenta, Y, yellow, and K is black. It means that you'll only see black with 50 degrees or so on like that. These are the colors or the four colors that is used in printing. So it's a bit confusing, I know, at this point, but still, it's kind of neat to have like 10 or 11 degrees of black or gray and then you just have to remember the amount of everyone if you feel like you're getting a bit confused just I will zoom out here and we will start to compare like is this gray wrong or right or so on like that if you really don't know then you just pick the eyedrop one and pick the color it will automatically pick and now I will go to the characters here and I will choose the life bucket you see, it has already divided this into shapes, so I do not have to worry about going in and selecting every area and so on like that. 
I'll just have to throw in the color. And if I zoom in, I zoom in, it's like 400 bigger in size. Does it pixelize no matter how much I zoom in? It doesn't, and it's really small in size when I save it as well. It's very compatible when I open up the file itself with the Photoshop, it opens up no problem. So it's really a great tool to use because you simply do not spend all that time in selecting and coloring and so on. It doesn't have the same brush options of the Photoshop and sometimes you do need the brush options in the Photoshop. Like I want to uh, give my characters a little bit of shading or so on so you have to open the documents and uh, do a bit of coloring here and there and so on. Um, the, let me show you some of the screen tones uh, in the in the program. I won't call them exactly screen tones, but they do have a similar nature to screen tones. You can just play around with them, you know. I go to the one before that. You just play around with it, and you'll be surprised by whatever you can come up with here or there um, and this is how I clear I guess with my illustrator program I love this program very much but it's not because of the coloring features that I like it because in general I like the tools in the illustrator There's a bunch of tools over here that makes drawing much easier Photoshop is great if you are going for digital painting, but if you are going to go for something a bit cartoony, if you want to do an animation, it's much easier to just take the color and throw it in instead of going in on every frame and selecting that certain frame and then coloring it. So the Illustrator is a time saver for coloring and toning in general. And if there isn't screen tones that's available here, in the Illustrator, you can simply take that into the Photoshop and add the custom screen tones that I told you about. That will be available in the information box in the Photoshop video, so make sure to check that out. So you just work the programs together and get the best of both worlds, and we're going to see that in the next video. But for now, I think this is more than enough to give you a quick look on the illustrator and what does it do or its option options and so on so with that guys i will see you in my next video bye bye